Hi everyone! Recently Razor reached out to me and sent the Black Shark V2 Pro to review. It's their top-of-the-line wireless headset that offers connectivity over USB and Bluetooth, and I was sent this for free and told to give my honest opinion of the headset. So, as an audio nerd who has used a wide range of gaming and professional headphones, the Black Shark fits right in the middle of the pack for me. And as a baseline, my favorite over-to-ear headphones are the Sennheiser HD 280s, which are priced around $100 US. My least favorite has to be the Sony Pulse headset, which was around $150. And I also use the Sennheiser HD 600s, which are open back and priced at $300. The Black Shark is a premium headset at $200, and while it's well-rounded in its functionality, the audio and build quality leaves a lot to be desired at this price point. During the last month, I spent around 60 to 75 hours, which is about the advertised battery life, using the Black Shark V2 Pro in a variety of settings. Firstly, I used the Black Shark to play games on my PC, including Final Fantasy XIV, Overwatch, Cookie Cutter, and a bunch of others. This experience was fairly decent, but the Razer tuning software isn't great, vocals were drowned out by the bass heavy 50mm drivers. Compared to my daily driver closed back headphones, the Sennheiser HD 280s, this experience felt incredibly similar, but with an overwhelming bass presence. It gave games like Cookie Cutter and Hades a really nice punch, but made games like Last Epoch, Persona 5 Royal, and Hellboy Web of Weird a bit overstimulating and made dialogue hard to hear during these action packed scenes. The headset is incredibly comfortable with my glasses, is easy to adjust, and the neoprene ear cups fit well over my ears. However, the buttons do not have enough definition to easily identify the functions, and the buttons are completely white and have very little texture definition as well. These buttons are incredibly hard to discern in low light settings and it's disappointing because low vision users may struggle with the buttons in general. The build quality is mostly plastic, which is disappointing at this price point, and there's a lot of flex in the headset and I'm not particularly comfortable throwing them into a bag while traveling. Additionally, the only metal parts of the headset are the wire frames, which seem to be durable but I'm sure would wear down significantly over time and the gigantic volume knob on the left ear cup is incredibly obnoxious and should have been a scroll wheel instead. Now, on PC, the setup was fantastic and fairly easy. I plugged the included USB dongle right into my computer, and Razer Synapse, which I already have installed from my Naga V2 Pro, popped up immediately. This experience may vary for you. You may have to go into the Razer website to get the software, but it was fairly easy to set up. I was easily able to EQ the headset and export profiles directly to the headset's onboard memory. I enjoyed using the headset for more action-packed games like Overwatch, Helldivers, and Warframe, but the EQ did not feel truly flat as the bass was still ever-present and a bit overwhelming. On PC, I give the headset a 6 out of 10. On my PS5, I also used the USB dongle to plug right into the console. This was a much simpler setup, as all you have to do is go into the controller settings and switch the audio device on the PlayStation 5. Now, in terms of audio quality, this was a similar experience to PC and was fantastic for playing action games like, like God of War Ragnarok and Final Fantasy XVI. The bass was less aggressive on the PS5, possibly because of the audio processing that the PlayStation uses, but it was an enjoyable experience and I would give it a 7 out of 10. Now, while many people would use this as a daily driver headset on a PC or a console, the Black Shark shines brightest in mobile situations using the Bluetooth features. Using the headset on my phone for music or light gaming was a joy and a fantastic for travel. The Bluetooth synced quickly with my phone without any issues and had no desync or drops whatsoever. The bass he heavy presence was still there but felt less aggressive over Bluetooth than on the USB dongle. Now this may also be influenced by my settings on Spotify where I have the EQ set to flat, so once again, your mileage may vary. And I have saved my favorite use case for last, the Steam Deck. This is just beyond fantastic and I genuinely enjoy the experiences I've had on the deck with my Black Shark and the connectivity was easy to use and through plug-in on the deck I was easily able to reconnect without issue. 
I've taken it with me in car rides, sitting on the couch, and in bed, and they're all fantastic and unique experiences. I'm just bummed I don't live in New Jersey anymore and couldn't use this on NJ Transit. My favorite games on the deck to use with the Black Sharks are Cookie Cutter, Hades, Xeno Tilt, and Persona 5 Royal. Overall, I'd rate using the Black Shark V2 on the deck an 8 out of 10. As I primarily play single player games, I didn't use the included microphone too much. For comparison, I'm currently using a Shure SM7B connected to a Lewitt Connect 6. And this is what the mic on the Black Shark V2 Pro sounds like. It is incredibly muffled and muddy. Um, I can imagine other people's frustrations when playing very action-packed games like Overwatch or Helldivers because this can absolutely get lost in the mix. It doesn't really have any punch to it. It is better than a lot of mics out there. Um, I think this would be fantastic for starting out on streaming or um, just like general use. But when the headset itself is $200, you could get a really good mic and a good pair of headphones for the same price and you'd be much better off. So it's incredibly disappointing and I will not be using it again. There's a lot that the Black Shark V2 Pro offers. The long battery life, the Bluetooth and USB capability, and the very comfortable ear cups. But as an audiophile, there are far better headphones at the price point of $200. If this was around $100 to $125, it'd be a masterclass in wireless gaming audio, and I'd be highly recommending it across the board instead of just for travel and mobile gaming. But with all that in mind, thank you once again to Razer for sending this headset to me, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have in the comments below, or you can join my Discord where we talk about audio stuff all the time and I've helped countless community members of the Kaiju Arcade get from simple gaming headsets into full-fledged professional audio. Thanks and have a good one.